All right, um, the, next, the next formula that I'd like to go over with you is the last one that we're going to be talking about. All right, it is the last formula that we are going to be talking about. I have not promised that before yet today, so this would be my first time promising it. Um, so this is going to be talking about, again, going back through inscribed angles. And all I want to remind you guys of when we're talking about an inscribed angle, remember an inscribed angle has two endpoints. All right, they can be anywhere on the circle, N and let's call them M. Okay. Now, for it to be an inscribed angle, it has to have an endpoint on the circle. Okay. Now, remember what we talked about. Let's call this measure of angle. Let's call this one. All right. Um, when we're going over this, we can say that the measure of angle one is equal to one half the arc of N. M. Correct? Right? That's what we talked about in the measure of that. So what I want you guys to understand is if I create another inscribed angle, it doesn't matter where that angle is, as long as it's an inscribed angle, and if that inscribed angle has the same endpoints, okay, is this still an inscribed angle in the red? Yes, it has endpoints on the circle and it has a vertex on the circle. What I want you guys to understand is that measure of angle 2 is it's equal to the same formula. It's an inscribed angle. So that's 1 half um, the arc. So therefore, I can now say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. So these angles are equal. So when you have two inscribed angles that have the same arc, their angles are going to be equal to each other. Okay. So I'm going to spend just about five minutes going